Heather, we've got several patients doing the high-dose vitamin C protocol right now, and so can you tell people what, what we're using that for and what we've seen? Okay, so with our high-dose vitamin C, we're using it for a few different things. So people that are coming in with an acute URI virus, if you, if you get to that virus as soon as you can, then we've seen some significant decrease in, in the symptoms within the next day. So that's been nice, right? You don't want to be out of work for a week or 10 days with a virus. So that really helps just facilitate um, getting rid of that virus. Um, the other thing that we started using it for probably three weeks ago, four weeks ago is Epstein-Barr, right? People that are having active Epstein-Barr. And so we've seen some great success with uh, the deactivation of the Epstein-Barr virus that is almost impossible to get rid of. Many people know Epstein-Barr as the monovirus or the kissing disease virus. Uh, we get it in childhood or some people get it in teenage years, but it can get reactivated just like shingles can get reactivated. So chicken, we get chicken pox as kids. Well, now we don't because there's a vaccine, but we get chicken pox as kids and that chicken pox virus lives in our spinal cord the rest of our lives. And if our immune system ever wanes far enough, then the, the chicken pox virus reactivates. And as an adult, it comes out as shingles, not chicken pox. So EBV, Epstein-Barr, can do the exact same thing. We get it as children and teenagers, but then it's put into a dormant state. We're immune to it. But if our immune system gets too dysfunctional, whether it's from gut dysfunction or adrenal dysfunction, whatever causes the immune dysfunction, it can launch out again. And the symptoms can be chronic mono or no different than the acute mono. It's fatigue, it's joint pains, it's brain fog. It's just generally not feeling well. So the Reorden Clinic actually did some studies on high-dose vitamin C, and their protocol was twice a week high-dose vitamin C. Uh, different dosages based on the weight of people and they got twice a week vitamin infusions for six weeks and they were able to show that the Epstein-Barr um, levels or titers came down tremendously at the end of the six weeks. So we've got several patients doing quite well on the Epstein-Barr protocol right now for, with the uh, high-dose vitamin C. Another thing we've um, been seeing more of in the conventional medicine is actually that vitamin C is being used for the people that are septic. Um, and sepsis means that when you are critically ill, you've got a pneumonia and, and there's actually bacteria in your bloodstream. That's what we call sepsis in the hospital. And um, it's got a significant mortality rate. The older you are, it can approach 50% mortality rate of, of becoming septic. And there was a study published uh, this year that showed giving vitamin C in the ICU to people that were septic actually drastically improved their morbidity and mortality. So this is amazing news coming from the conventional medicine side of things. And so the reason why we think, or it's been hypothesized, is that vitamin C is an immune booster. And when you've got bacteria in your bloodstream, let's face it, the best thing for you is a, a better immune system. So fascinating new stuff coming out. We've seen a lot of benefits with the vitamin infusions. So uh, we would encourage you, if you're suffering from any of those symptoms that Heather mentioned, fatigue, brain fog, gut dysfunction, then consider doing a vitamin infusion of Myers cocktail and glutathione to see if that makes a tremendous difference for you.